And so this is the formal ROM4 definition. Bothersome postprandial fullness, early satiation, epigastric pain, or burning. No evidence of structural disease likely to explain the symptom, including upper endoscopy. And the symptoms have been present at least the last six months. Very, very simple definition. But the terminology is not commonplace, not like IBS terminology. So we actually communicate with patients with pictograms. We show them where the epigastrium is. This is where you feel stomach symptoms between the umbilicus, lower end of the sternum, the midclavicular line. And then we have cartoons or pictograms explaining the different symptoms in a visually appealing way. Postprandial fullness, heavy weight in the stomach after a meal, a belt tightening the stomach so it cannot store a big meal, that is early satiation, epigastric pain and burning self-explanatory. And actually there's not almost no functional dyspepsia patients where it stops with one or two or three or four of these four symptoms. Usually they have additional symptoms for which we have also pictograms, heartburn, excessive belching, upper abdominal bloating and balloons. It's a gaseous sense of distension and nausea. So that is actually the definition of functional dyspepsia. Part of the Rome criteria were made to do epidemiology, and that has been used for functional dyspepsia as well. And we published with the Rome Foundation early last year, the Rome Global Epidemiology Study. I think this was an extraordinary undertaking where 33 countries were, had a survey of a very large and representative part of the adult population. And I'm going to focus on the 26 countries that had a internet survey. Internet survey alone is in blue and both internet and door-to-door -door is green. I will not address the door-to-door the -door surveys only that are the yellow countries where internet is less accessible. And these people filled out extensive Rome and other questionnaires and it allows us to extract the prevalence of presumed functional dyspepsia. And this is 7.2% of the overall population. It is more in women than in men, 8.7 versus 5.8. And it goes down with age. So the patient I showed you, 27 years old, sounded like functional dyspepsia, had dyspeptic symptoms, negative endoscopy. Actually with increasing age segment, the prevalence declines. And this is giving you some images of around the world. And actually the US, you have a prevalence of 10% of functional dyspepsia. And just for your information, functional dyspepsia is less well known, but this is more than double of the US prevalence of IBS in the same survey. And in Belgium, we have 5% of the adult population with functional dyspepsia symptoms. And this is associated with decreased quality of life for physical and mental functioning and with elevated anxiety and depression scores compared to the non-functional dyspepsia rest of the population. And this has been a confounder for many disorders of gut-brain interaction or functional disorders, including functional dyspepsia. Part of that association has caused a impression that this is imagined happening in the brain and that the periphery, the stomach, is of no concern actually and of no relevance in understanding disease and managing it. And I'll come back to that later. So that was the epidemiology of functional dyspepsia and the historical perspective.